I uh, can't believe I'm saying this, but She-Hulk happened. Hello and welcome to the Lechuga channel, where I like talking about TV shows, among other things. She-Hulk Attorney at Law stars Tatiana Maslany as the titular character and is directed by a variety of people and writers, and it is the sixth TV show in the MCU lineup of Disney Plus shows that are part of the overarching MCU storyline and are relevant to the story. I've been relatively excited for this new She-Hulk ever since it was announced that not only was it going to be the last one in phase four of the Disney Plus MCU shows, but it was also going to be nine episodes long, which is weird because the only other show that's nine episodes long is the very first one, which is WandaVision. However, even though I am excited for these TV shows every time they come out and I always watch them weekly, I have to admit that in my opinion marvel hasn't really been that great in terms of the mcu so far in 2022 you have doctor strange in the multiverse of madness which well very well directed by sam raimi lacked a lot on the script as it was just kind of a mess overall then you have thor 4 which is just kind of a regular mess and in the tv show department you have moon knight which well started off strong one of the best pilots i think in the mcu tv show so far kind of dipped in quality in the midpoint and the latter episodes because it just kind of devolved into these good guy punches bad guy and kaiju battles and there wasn't a lot of depth to what was happening in my opinion and lastly you have miss marvel which kind of the same deal as moon knight he was very strong at first i really liked the first handful of episodes dedicating to kamala khan but as the show went on it started focusing on a lot of the more boring aspects of the character and stuff that i don't really like in the series and by the end i was just feeling really disappointed at what i got of course this isn't a dog on you if you like these shows or anything i still like i still enjoy watching them i still like watching them weekly I still get excited whenever a new one comes out so of course i was excited for she hulk now the first episode is out and i have watched it but before i get into my thoughts on said first episode i kind of want to talk about the history of she hulk in the comics and what are some of like her best runs and whatnot so you can like get an idea of what my perspective on the character is and also kind of like contextualize the character of she hulk give you a bit of history on the character that you might not have known of before and so hopefully with the information i'll be giving you you can also watch the tv show and maybe have like more of an idea of who the character was before she was brought to the silver screen in tv so you might be asking yourself where the character of Jennifer Walters even originated, and well, she actually has a pretty interesting uh, backstory behind her creation. You see, in the late 70s and early 80s, you had the Incredible Hulk TV show, which was relatively popular among, you know, kind of casual audiences, similar to the MCU now, and well, uh, in between seasons, rumors started coming out that maybe this TV show was going to introduce a new female Hulk variant that hadn't been seen before in the comics. And these rumors grew so popular, it eventually reached Stan Lee, who was like, shit. You see, if the Incredible Hulk TV show actually did introduce a new female Hulk, then that would mean that the network behind the show would own the rights to said character, which is obviously not something that Marvel Comics wanted. So, Stan Lee, after getting a hold of these rumors, immediately rushed out an issue introducing a female Hulk. It was very quickly done, it was kind of half assedly but that's how we got the first issue of the Savage She-Hulk. This also explains why Jennifer Walters' backstory is initially so plain she's bruce banner's cousin we don't really get to know a lot about her in that first issue all we know is that she's a lawyer she's almost killed by a crime boss and in order to save her life bruce banner shares some of his blood with her so that she can survive and because of the gamma radiation in his blood she turns into the she hulk Ooh. The initial run of the Savage She-Hulk and Jennifer Walters' first introduction is honestly really plain if you ask me. There's not a lot of cool ideas, there isn't really a mythos behind the character. All we really know about her is that she's a lawyer, she's a Hulk, and that's kinda it. In fact, I'd say that in, outside of her own series, her best incarnations are when she's a supporting character to not only the Hulk, but also the Fantastic Four, which she ended up joining in 1984 shortly after Secret Wars. However, 
1989, we finally got what I consider to be one of, if not the definitive, She-Hulk comic book with The Sensational She-Hulk. Written by John Byrne, The Sensational She-Hulk did a bit of a reimagining of the character of Jennifer Walters into something completely new and different. Jennifer Walters now did something that didn't, wasn't really done at the time, and that is she broke the fourth wall a lot. In fact, the cover of her first comic book had her threatening the reader on burning all of their X-Men comic books if they didn't buy hers, which is just so over the top and not at all common for the time. The comic book as a whole was also just really goofy and ridiculous. There's such a there's so many weird stuff that happens that just makes no sense. There's an issue where Jennifer Walters is sold by an alien race that she can switch bodies just just because she can, and then she's like, oh, okay, and then she just does it. There, there's an issue where she like her body gets stolen from her and then she's just like a decapitated head narrating the whole story and being like oh, okay this will all probably be solved by the end of the issue so i'll be fine there's even an issue where jennifer walters goes into what's called the Voloniverse, which is and i quote a cosmos of cold cuts contained in an innocuous trapezoidal frame that rests on wilcox's desk ladies and gentlemen i cannot make this up if i wanted to Overall, Jennifer Walters is just such a great character in this series. She's kind of like this don't give a damn attitude, getting what she wants regardless of really anything. And it's just a really fun and ridiculous comic book. Sadly though, by the time we reach the early 90s and the conclusion of Sensational She-Hulk, we see a new character kind of rise in popularity and you might guess who it is, it's Deadpool. Deadpool was a character who started growing extremely popular for doing exactly what She-Hulk did, and that's break the fourth wall, break the laws of physics, break the laws of comic books to get what he wants, and he was wanting to go really popular. So of course, Marvel, not wanting two characters with in essence the exact same gimmick, decided to revert She-Hulk to what she was before because of Deadpool's popularity, and made her essentially boring again, if you ask me. By the time we reached the early 2000s, it was very clear that Marvel didn't really know what to do with She-Hulk anymore after the sensational She-Hulk, because everything that was set up in her initial run wasn't really enough to work with. Superhero who's also a lawyer? Yep, we got that, there's Daredevil. Superhero who can break the fourth wall? There's Deadpool. Hulk? We have a Hulk. There's a few cool series here and there, like the 2004 The Onslaught run, there's a 2014 run, the 2022 current run I'm somewhat enjoying so far, but overall there really isn't any comic book that really captured my imagination with this sheer goofy and ridiculousness and just like the character as Jennifer Walters as much as the sensational She-Hulk, which I think is kind of a shame. Now, if you ask me if what I want the most out of a She-Hulk comic book that's not like the sensational She-Hulk is to just lean more on the lawyer aspect of the character, you know? Like, instead of having a superhero comic book with a character who's also a lawyer, why not have a straight-up courtroom drama which has a character as a superhero as well? I think that would be cool and I haven't really seen it been done before. However, this leads me to She-Hulk Attorney at Law TV show. So after over 40 years since her initial debut in the comic books and many many attempts of getting her into the big screen over the course of many decades, we finally get a full-blown She-Hulk TV show. The previews and trailers for this TV show, I well, honestly really kind of captured my interest and imagination, it seemed to be exactly what I want out of a She-Hulk story. It focuses more on her lawyer aspects, it seems to bring back a lot of old aspects, in fact, it even has her break the fourth wall like she hasn't done since the sensational She-Hulk, and Tatiana Maslany seemed like a really cool pick for this character. So even though I haven't really been enjoying a lot of Marvel's uh, MCU content as of late, I was still more than ready to give this series a shot and just kind of see how it is and see if it captures the same imagination as it did with the sensational She-Hulk. So what did I think? It's kind of hard to give my first impressions on just a first episode without having seen anything else of the series. By all intents and purposes, this is more of a setup episode than anything else. It introduces us to She-Hulk and also her relationship to Bruce Banner, as well as set up the main conflict of the story by the end of said episode. But let's start with what I liked about the TV show. 
First of all, the relationship between Tatiana Maslany and Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, I think, was very well. These two actors have a lot of chemistry with each other. Uh, they play along very well. You genuinely believe that these two are family and the dynamic between the two of them was, in my opinion, the most interesting part of the episode and the part that, you know, was really entertaining to me. I also thought it was surprisingly funny. I am kind of burnt out on the Joss Whedon uh, Marvel humor that's just the same thing in each movie. And even though that's kind of the same thing we get here, I still thought it was like, it was really funny, it was really entertaining. Tatiana Maslany has a lot of great comedic timing. And especially when she turns into the She-Hulk, I always thought it was pretty funny. Especially um, in that one part where... Uh, where she, where Bruce Banner almost kills her and then she like all gets all raged up and breaks everything down and then she's like oh I'm just Jennifer Walters that that, that to me was pretty funny there's, there's a lot of color in the episode a lot of it takes place in Mexico and you know there's lots of green lots of red but there's also like beaches and scenery that looks very cool there's lots of really interesting locations through the bulk of it and overall, I'd say it did accomplish the goal of making an entertaining and funny with cool character episode that does a good enough job of getting me invested in the story. However, I do have a lot of noticeable gripes with the episode. First of all, the CGI still looks kind of rough. In the trailers when they first came out, uh, a lot of people said this online, but the CGI on She-Hulk's face looked really odd it, it didn't look bad but it just kind of looked like weird like it didn't really fit the aesthetic and it still looks like that in the final product which i think is really disappointing but it's not just she hulk regular smart hulk as well also looks kind of odd even though we've already seen him look really good in endgame so what I can only assume is that the VFX artists either didn't have enough time or maybe didn't have the resources necessary. They probably had a lower budget since it's a TV show. But when you compare it to the CGI we've seen of the exact same character in the movies, the quality is pretty noticeable and I thought that was a little jarring when watching the episode. I still, it doesn't look bad, but I just thought it looked a little rough. Also, what I thought the episode was entertaining by itself as an origin story, I thought it was just kind of okay. Um, like I said, the origin story in the comics to me is the weakest part of the She-Hulk character, and there's not really anything done in this episode to make it more entertaining. It's still a pretty plain, pretty uninteresting origin story that I feel like could have honestly been brushed aside pretty quickly. Like, instead of giving us this entire episode dedicated to it, you could have probably just had a 5 minute flashback quickly explaining all of the things that led to She-Hulk's creation and then just went straight to the interesting parts, which is what I'm assuming we're getting in future episodes. So yeah, I felt like this episode could have probably done a better job at giving us not only the origin story for She-Hulk, but also just kind of giving us a more interesting story, because as it is now, it's a setup episode that'll probably lead into something much more exciting, but by itself, it's not really anything special. In fact, I'd say it's one of the weakest pilots we've gotten so far, because pretty much every pilot of the MCU show so far have been great in my opinion. Also, I just want to mention that Tatiana Maslany does not break the fourth wall as much as I would like her. She does it twice in the first episode, which, I don't know, I kind of wanted to see it a bit more. The second time was, like, really underwhelming. She just kind of, like, looks at the camera and it's like, oh, hi. And she looks back at Hulk and Hulk's like, whoa, whoa, what, what the fuck? It seems like the trailers were kind of overselling it a little bit. But even though I feel like this, I still, I'm still excited for it. I still want to see where the series goes. I want to see what happens next. I want to give the full nine episodes a fair shot and see if this first episode was just there for like a little teaser, a little idea of what's happening, a little lighthearted humor, a bit of entertaining between hulks. Overall, I thought it was fun, but not anything special and definitely one of the weaker pilots we've gotten from Marvel so far. So that's going to be it for this video. I'll likely be doing a follow-up video on She-Hulk once the series has actually concluded, so make sure to subscribe to the Latuga channel to be notified of weekly uploads, and also hit the like button while you're there. What are your thoughts on the new She-Hulk TV show? Let me know in the comments below. I talk a lot about storytelling and kind of comic books and literature. I also talk about like right now TV shows, so if any of those like topics interest you, then make sure to ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And hey, if you like this video, why not watch another one? I have a playlist on screen right now with all of my comic book related content. So that's going to be about it. See ya.